chapter in the 33rd verse, it says this, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I can't think of any place that I would rather be on the ending of not only a year, on this New Year's Eve, but a decade than in God's house. And I'm going to be very brief, and I appreciate the privilege to be here and stand before you. And I appreciate this church and its ministry, and especially Brother Mike. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming to this prayer vigil. Today, on behalf of our churches, our community, our county, and our commonwealth, and better than that, our country. Thank you for remaining prayerful and concerned about important issues that impact our faith, our families, and our future. But we've come today united in the truth of the finished work of Calvary, where the Lord Jesus said, it is finished. The Bible says that we have an advocate with the Father, that we have a great intercessor with God the Father, that we have a great high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And because of his sovereignty, he cannot be voted out. He cannot be overthrown. He cannot be impeached. He cannot be dethroned. And he cannot be overtaken. For he said, I am the great I am. He doesn't and is not uh, consumed with what we know is time for. He is always present. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Rose of Sharon. The sweet lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Yea, he's altogether lovely. And as the John the Revelator said, for he has always been... He still is, and he will always be King of kings and Lord of lords. So if you're with me and you're glad you saved this afternoon, why don't you give him a little praise? Thank you all, and it is an honor and a privilege to be serving and worshiping with you today. Sheriff Shuler was disappointed that he couldn't be here with you today. I guess you can imagine what his agenda looks like sometimes, him being the sheriff of the county. He's off at a meeting and couldn't make it, so I'll be here standing in for him. Not sure that I'll do the job that he might do, but uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord is, is a pretty good one, I believe. Um, I'm going to open us up in prayer. May we pray. 
Lord, we thank you again for this beautiful day that you've given us, God. Lord, any day that we get to serve you is a great one. Lord, we ask you, God, to bless the people that's on this pulpit, God. Bless all the people here and all the homes that's represented, God. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've given us. We thank you for all the nourishment, God. We thank you for the country that we live in, God. We thank you, Lord, for all the service members that's uh, overseas protecting our freedoms and the ones here on our souls, God, that fight for our rights. All the citizens that stand up for our rights and stand up and serve you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for them. We ask you, God, to be with everyone here, God. Bless each and every one that's represented here. And may all that we do be for you. Forgive us of our many sins. Lead God and direct us. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. God bless America. this opportunity I told David I didn't know if I should get up in the pulpit or not so keep your heads down I'm not a preacher I'm a used car dealer um, I want to open up with a little verse too which we've I've heard this all my life so we've all read the Bible and we were raised in schools and and uh, Bible schools and uh, our parents drug us to church whether we wanted to go or not but never ever in my 60 years have the things that we read in the Bible come so clear, crystal clear as they are today. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I'm telling you, we've seen it. I first really realized that in the 2012 at the Democratic National Convention, I was watching it on television and they came on there to open up their convention. It was a sad day for me um, when they went to open the convention just like they always have. Listen, um, this Democratic-Republican split, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But when the fellows went to open it up with prayer, they said, well, we'll open with prayer. I guess we'll open with prayer. And they asked the preacher to come up there. Well, the people there started booing. So they didn't want to open with prayer. And I cried because I knew right then we was in trouble. So it broke my heart. But I knew we were on a downhill slide. Um, our generation has to take a lot of the blame. We've stood by and we've been the... Uh, silent majority for a long time. And look what's happened as they took prayer out of school. So they took away the things that have been taught forever and there's a brand new narrative that has uh, came to our nation. Um, the first thing I want to talk about just uh, briefly a little bit is we have got to get past this Republican 
Democrat thing division. That's what big government wants. That's what Satan wants, and that's driven by Satan. Uh, there is good Democrats. There's good Republicans. Our sheriff has done so much in our sanctuary city uh, battle. Had not been for him, he's got a D beside his name for a Democrat. That's a party he runs on. That's not who he is, or Roy Evans, or any of my friends that are Democrats. So um, we've got to get away from that. I think we ought to call ourselves constitutional conservatives, and the people who are in these churches and filling up the pews, that's what we need to be as a group, is constitutional conservatives united. Because what these people will fear the most is the day that this country, if we ever unite again, the corruption's going away, y'all. It'll be gone. It'll be gone. Um, so that was one of the things I had to get off my heart. We need to not play their games of dividing us by party. Dividing us by beliefs, um, that's things that we'll have to work on, but we got to quit letting them divide us. Our country is so divided, that's exactly where they want to be. That's why we can't get term limits and some of these things done. And what they want, uh, at the end of the day, the way it stands now, we will all agree with everything the Republicans say and will be against everything the Democrats say. Well, that's just the way that it's worked out. So we've got to call, group together, like-minded people, like all of us, we're like-minded people. I don't care what party tickets you vote or any of that. We believe in the same things. We believe in church and we believe in our freedoms, we believe in our rights, and we believe in the Almighty God. And, that's why I don't worry about what's going to happen at the end of all this because I still know who's in control. Um, how many, let me see a show of hands before I go into any of this. How many of you really know what's going on in Richmond? Have you read the bills and you're, you're pretty familiar with what's going on? Okay. Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty good bunch, so that's good. So you know that House Bill 64, what they're trying to do, because they won this election, now they're, they're making this a bigger thing, and all eyes are on Virginia, all over this country. We're on news outlets everywhere. I mean, my son's in Texas. He's in Austin, Texas. I hear it from him every few days, you know. Hey, y'all were on the news again last night. Here's what we heard, and here's what we heard. So what we have to remember, a lot of this rhetoric is coming from the extreme left, which I... I they're almost like terrorists, and we also have the extreme right. So when we go to Richmond the 20th, uh, don't be surprised if something bad were to happen. I hope not. I hope we can go up there and do what it's supposed to be is a gun lobby. Uh, there's going to be people there who, from both sides, would like to see it be something other than that. Because if they can stir a ruckus up and if something bad happens there, it's just going to continue to feed the fire. And where this fire is going, I don't know. Uh, the things we hear now and we see on social media almost every single day is civil war. I never heard that growing up. I never heard it all my life till now. Have you all? Y'all a bunch of gray-haired people. I mean, I just hadn't heard it. Um, so these things that are going on that's causing the division, I think it's uh, driven by people with beliefs not like our own. Uh, luckily, we live in an area where the pledge to defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, and the oaths that I took when I was in the military and these deputies and our board of supervisors and people, thank God they stood by it. And they stood by their constitutional oath of Virginia and the U.S. Constitution, and that's why we are a Second Amendment county. If those people in Richmond aren't listening by now, I don't know what else the uh, citizens of Virginia can say. Ninety-plus counties uh, have said the sheriff's departments and everybody and the Commonwealth attorneys have said, hey, we're, we're just not, we're not going to enforce it. We're not going to spend our assets on it. We're not going to take our time to prosecute people who aren't criminals. If this continues, the, the people in Richmond, they can't uh, act like they're surprised. It's a pretty civil conversation now, but when civility vanishes under grim nationwide determination because every state is watching this, and they're trying to do this in other states. Kentucky, Wisconsin, they've jumped on. All these other states are trying to do what we've already done in Virginia to try and keep those rights. Well, that just tells you this is a nationwide movement. But if it continues down this path of tyranny, um, 
I would say that uh, the legacy we leave, I hope, will be of one of all of us in our area standing for freedom and for the next generation because I'd rather fight them now than for these kids to have to fight them. Um, but if we, we can't turn our back on these young people. We've got to stand firm. So once again, I say that if it hadn't been for our forefathers, uh, we'd all be paying too much tax on tea. Don't we wish it was that easy? And uh, I thank you for this time, and I uh, appreciate this opportunity. I want to thank uh, Steve and Dave and Brad all for coming today. We're here to pray, and uh, that's what we're going to do. Because God is God, and beside him there is none else. Now on your agenda, you've got me up next here to speak a little bit on uh, one twenty twenty. I've got a quote here from Morton Blackwell, and I just heard it for the first time last night. Um, we have really uh, tried our best over the last 50 years to try to promote harmony and unity amongst God's people. Psalms 133, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren, the God's people that are saved, to dwell together in unity. Jesus said, a house divided, a nation divided cannot stand. And we have kindly been a little idle. I got to say this. I wish we would have gotten stirred up a long time ago when uh, the Alinskyites, and I, and I don't like to use terms like that, but... If you don't know Saul Alinsky and, and you don't know anything about Karl Marx and a lot of these philosophies of communism, socialism, and even back in the 1920s, back in the 1830s, see, the Bible says there's nothing new under heaven. It's been a four time. Even under Bill Clinton in the 90s, there was an absolute ban on assault rifles, and that ran out. Uh, but then the agenda was to take America from the little ones to the kindergarten all the way up and change the mindset. So it wasn't just coincidental that they started saying things like the word, the name Jesus offends us. You know, we don't want stars at, at award shows or a sports figure. You remember that? And getting prayer out of school, getting the expression of Jesus out of school, getting the prayers taken away, taken away before Friday night football game back in the 90s, all those things, step by step by step by step. And our way of life, you know, chiseled away. And, and Steve talked about principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. This is a spiritual fight, brothers and sisters. There is an there evil spirit. I call calling it Leviathan. I've never seen such an evil spirit come on America. And professing to be wise, they become fools. And the programs that they institute, I, I'm just going to say it because I believe it. I don't think left-wing liberals have ever successfully built anything. They just take over and then ruin it. For a quick example off the top of my head, oh, get the paddle out of school. It causes violence. Take a paddle out, now we've got officers in school. You know, uh, 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 the Constitution, as George Washington says, works for a moral people. So when you take away morality, you introduce sexual education, and then you want homosexuality identified. And then, but that's not enough for the, for the activist. Because they know they're going to go for and take that ground and hold it, then take more ground and hold it. And now we've got all kinds of things going on in our high school to where most of these young people over here at Youth Camp will agree with me. It's hard to learn because of the disruptions of the unruly in class. And I got heads going up and down over here. I mean, you, you see, those policies don't work. There's a way that seems right, but the end there are the ways of death. So if we've got a spiritual enemy, the only thing that can bat the devil is the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and when God's people come together. So here's the quote. Never make the perfect the enemy of the good. What does the Bible say about, about this? Jesus said that we'd have unity. So we've gathered today to pray and to seek God 
Now, on 2020, make sure, Steve, I'm going to talk to you privately. I'm going to talk to you personally, publicly here. Because I've got many, many other things going on. You've got many, many other things going on. And I don't know, I, I appreciate the, the Second Amendment movement. I'm proud that Smith County is a, is a A2 sanctuary county. Maybe the town of Marion will pass a resolution, chill how it's all. All of these counties across Virginia, I'm glad, thank God, that something has finally stirred us up. But if I could have any input on the leadership, you know, I don't know how well organized it is. But one thing's for sure, actions ought to be recorded very strenuously when you go to Richmond on the 20th. Leftists are going to come to protest racism and Nazism. They've already called you all extremist. And they'll be setting up pre-event news releases. Getting their allies at MSNBC, CNN, CBS, ABC, all these people predetermined before you all ever get there. Now, I'm not going to go into detail, but I'll tell you, I've watched, this, I've watched this since the 90s. This has all been set up. The last point of, of, Len, of, of uh, Linskyism is gun confiscation. See, you can talk about your screens and your songbooks, but the devil's out here after these kids right over here. And if you can't self-deny yourself long enough, dear preacher or churchgoer, to where you're willing to just say, look, I'm crucified with Christ. It ain't about what I want, me, 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 and everybody else is wrong. Never make the perfect the enemy of the good. If you're saved by God's grace, that means we're brothers and sisters. And we don't want a generation rising up in America that doesn't know God or this book. And if we can't self-deny and die to self and sacrifice ourselves for the greater good of the gospel of the grace of God, then I don't, are we really true biblical Christians? Or have we been duped by the devil to think, oh, the Baptist's the only one's right. Pentecostal's the only one's right. We ain't going to have nothing to do. They're casting out devils, but they ain't doing it like we're doing it. We forbade them, Lord. We need one another. We're supposed to love one another, and we're supposed to pray together. Because I've had a great life. I'm 66 years old, white-headed. I've got less ahead than I have behind Danny, and you're two years older than I am. We're just doing what we're doing for the glory of God and the good of these kids over here. They, said, they call that which is good evil and that which is evil good. Here we are. Biblical prophecy coming to pass, absolutely. But when good people do nothing, then evil people get to do whatever the heck they want to do. So you've got to do something. You say, well, pray. We're going to pray right now in a minute. I hope you've already been praying. We've got to have the intervention of God. So make sure, Steve, that some of the organizers, and I hope, I'm confident that you all are doing this, to preset the event with true purposes of protecting constitutional rights and promoting common sense and mutual respect and get that word out. You're already doing that. You're not going there for confrontation. You're going there as, a, as citizens to express your concern of your loss of your constitutional rights and you're not going to lay down and be a rug for a bunch of left-wing people to walk over top of. We're saved too. We're saved and we've got constitutional rights too. <laughs> Don't let political correctness, young people, drive you back to where you're afraid to express your opinion. When I was y'all's age and Charlie, Har Charlie Harkins was teaching me government at Marion Senior High School, there was a thing, you remember that, Daniel? <laughs> there was a thing that we all were raised to believe, that I may not agree with what you say, but I would die for your right to say it. You remember that? Because we loved America and we knew we were different, but we used to be a melting pot where people come here to be Americans. Now you've got these isolated pockets of people that don't even want to learn our language that are operating on other law systems and legal systems to where in some places in America our law enforcement don't even go into those neighborhoods. So it's divide and conquer, divide and conquer, and we understand that, but make sure that the, the, that those in Richmond know why you're coming up there and have your cameras out, maybe some news releases for that purpose. 
Patriots march for safety and preservation of our constitutional rights with respect and dignity of all. Identify yourself prior and have contacts for the media, whether it's the Richmond Times Dispatch, the Washington Post, or the New York Times, or whoever it is, local TV, CNN, Fox News, whoever it is. Because Antifa and others are going to be looking for somebody that probably don't have a lick of sense about American history. They'll be there ranting and raving and using the F word and cussing and everything else, and there's where they're going to put their zoom lens on you. And it's going to take a lot of restraint, absolutely. So we try to be re, have reliable and sensible people for interviews and things like that. They'll be looking for the crazies, I promise you that, to plaster on the news. They're going to be far right, far left in attendance. And listen to this, about 2% on the far right, about 2% on the far left. That means 96% of us in the middle here are common sense people that believe in the rule of law and a lot of us have been saved by God's grace, filled with his spirit. And that's the group of people that's going to have to come together. And I believe it's happening. So maybe even a prior press release or something like that, uh, you know, of intent, inform people, ready for interviews, make those people known to the media. And it would be Here's terrible that. to have violence on the 20th unnecessarily because any law has to pass the scrutiny of the judiciary. It can go to the Virginia Supreme Court, even to the U.S. Supreme Court. And then hear this. The next, see, even though through the district lines, gerrymandering and all like that, they're saying it'd be very hard for conservatives to regain control of the General Assembly. But we're going to get to vote for a new governor, a new lieutenant governor, and a new attorney general. Cuccinelli lost to Mark Herring by less than 300 votes. And to my brothers and sisters in Smith County and Southwest Virginia, it ain't the same D as it used to be. I don't want to make people mad, but in Virginia and rural areas, we need every single solitary vote. And wouldn't it be something if God would bless and we'd get a good old boy that loves God in the governor's seat the next time? And a, and a lieutenant governor and even a senator, this Faulkner young man, impressing me running for Senate. U.S. Senate. I mean, there's another election coming, brothers and sisters, and we can put somebody else in the governor chair, someone else as a lieutenant governor, and a conservative, God-fearing, constitution-respecting attorney general the next time. So God ain't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, love, and a sound mind. So, Pray that God will keep you all safe, whoever's there on the 20th. Pray that God will lead the right people to these committee meetings from the 7th to the 19th. Pray for wisdom. And pray for the godly power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's why we're here, brothers and sisters. Listen to Psalms 9, 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Psalms 33, 12, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. May we never say that America, there's a generation arisen that doesn't know God. There's a Jesus movement going on. See, MSNBC and all that bunch ain't going to tell you that. Did you hear about how many tens of thousands of young people's in the stadium in Orlando the other day praising God? Did you hear the Clemson quarterback talking about how much he loves God? Praise God, I'm telling you, we ain't beat, we are still got victory. That ain't going to change, God's still God. Just like David started out, he's still the rose of Sharon. He's still the great I am. And there's nothing too hard for him. So there is a way, though, that seemeth right to man in there of the ways of death. Don't let that happen to America. Don't let people who profess to be wise, yet they become fools. Don't let them have the rain anymore. Can you sacrifice yourself here or wherever you're watching this? Can you say, Lord, it ain't about me, it's about you, and it's about this lost and dying world, and about our younger generation, and we want your power, God, we want your intervention, we want you to be there on the 20th of January, we want you to walk up and down the hallways, and in and out of that Capitol building and office buildings, God, we need your Holy Spirit anointing, we need your protection, we need your grace, we need the glory, the power of Pentecost, praise God, that's who we are, David, is God's men and God's people. Righteousness exalteth the nation, Proverbs 14, 34, but sin is a reproach to any people. 
Listen to Proverbs 29, 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Let me tell you right quick, if you're watching this in your leftist outfit, we ain't Venezuela. We ain't Cambodia. I ain't saying this threatening. I'm saying this factual. We're not China. We're not Russia. We ain't going to lay this down. And our forefathers through the grace of God gave us a right to bear arms against tyranny and we ain't laying them down. (laughs) I ain't saying that as a threat. I'm just saying that as a truth because we are born again, blood washed, spirit filled people of the most high God and we don't have the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and we've got victory in Jesus and the devil, nobody else can take it away. Glory be unto his holy name. Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Don't let the light go dim and don't let the salt lose its savor. Jesus said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. The 13th chapter of Romans, Paul said that the human governments are ordained of God. And listen, before we pray, Romans 10, 1. Paul, Paul, as feeble as he was, said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Can we approach this altar in a moment with that same attitude, God, my heart's desire is to see the United States of America saved. Barack Obama, our last president, said that we were a post-Christian nation. That we are no longer a Christian nation. I think he's wrong. I think he didn't get that right. God's people are all over this country. And if it takes this to stir us up, then hallelujah. But you got that 2% on the far right, you got that 2% on the far left, and they're probably going to be at one another. But you got this 96% of us, I think, may not be Christian, but they respect God. And they respect the book. And they respect our Constitution. Ephesians 1, 2, Paul says, Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. As we humble our hearts and approach this altar, 